we're going to go over this story. I'm very anti-conspiracy theory. So I hope you're all prepared for me to be very skeptical about a lot of stuff. But we're going to have fun with it. But I, I'm, gonna, I'm also going to bring up the story from a, a story from 2013 about a journalist named Michael Hastings. Mainstream reporters, okay, this is a journalist, somehow died. Car accident. It's very, very suspect circumstances. This guy's, you know, uh, rest in peace. I mean, this with all due respect to Michael Hastings and his family and everything. But he was, uh, according to the story, worried about someone tampering with his car. Asked to borrow someone else's car, panicked, and then like a day later, his car was going 70 miles an hour down the road, slammed into a tree, and some apparently experts said it sounded like a car hack. This guy was doing some like deep investigation, and I'll tell you why journalism is, is, is dead in this, in, in this country and many parts of the world. It's because of stories like the one we're about to tell you. As I said a moment ago, a FedEx delivery driver, that's who walked up to this house and apparently, you know, knocked on the door, rang the doorbell, 20-year-old kid answers it. You see a FedEx guy out the window. What do you do? Answer the door. Bolt to the chest. Bang. That's why journalists are gone. This is a judge, mind you. That's why I want to talk about Michael Hastings. So let's just, let's, let's, not even, let's not even mess around. We got a lot to talk about in this story. Here's the first story from the Financial Times. Gunman attacks house of judge over, overseeing Epstein lawsuit. FBI identifies anti-feminist lawyer as primary subject in shooting that killed Esther Salas' son. Now, this is another really weird aspect of the story. The dude apparently was like a men's rights activist. They say anti-feminist, but he was, you know, I, he wasn't suing like, I, I don't know. It sounds like he was a men's rights lawyer. Okay. So this is all part weird part. Of, but let's, let's read. I'll give you the full context. They say the FBI has identified a self-described anti-feminist lawyer as the primary subject in a brutal attack against the home of a federal judge in New Jersey that killed her 20-year-old son and injured her husband. In a tweet on Monday, the FBI's branch in Newark, New Jersey, said that Roy Den Hollander, who is known for pursuing legal claims alleging discrimination against men, was the main target in its investigation into the deadly Sunday shooting at the home of Judge Esther Salas. The FBI confirmed that Den Hollander was dead after media reports said he had been found in New York State. Last week, Judge Salas, who was not hurt in the assault, had been assigned to oversee a lawsuit filed by investors against Deutsche Bank. They alleged that the bank had made false and misleading statements with regards to its anti-money laundering practices and had improperly monitored high-risk customers, including the late disgraced Epstein. Authorities have not linked uh, uh, the shooting to the Deutsche Bank case. The FBI has not offered any motive for the attack. Bill Barr, the U.S. Attorney General on Monday, said this kind of lawless evil action carried out against a member of the federal judiciary will not be tolerated. Judge Salas and her family are in our thoughts at this, uh, at this time as they cope with this senseless act, Phil Murphy, the governor of New Jersey, wrote on Twitter. According to CNN, the gunman was disguised as a FedEx delivery driver, opened fire as soon as the, home, uh, the door of the home was opened. Daniel Anderil, Ms. Salas's 20-year-old son, was fatally struck. Mark Anderil, a criminal defense attorney, was taken to the hospital near their home in North Brunswick, New Jersey. Judge Salas had dealt with Den Hollander in the past as he was pursuing a case challenging the male-only military draft in the U.S. Bob Menendez, the Democratic senator from New Jersey, said he knew Judge Salas and her husband well and had been proud to recommend her to Barack Obama for the judicial post, which she took up nine years ago. My prayers are with Judge Salas and her family and that those responsible for this horrendous act are swiftly apprehended and brought to justice, Mr. Menendez said. Do you know the story of uh, Senator Menendez? No, I don't. Do you? I do. I'm going to be very, very vague. Yeah. Very vague. But there were accusations. It's my general understanding. And based on, I'm being very legally careful here, based on my readings of the news and what I remember of them, which could be wrong. It's been a long time and I haven't pulled it up. Senator Menendez was accused of engaging in adult activities with women under the age of 18. And I think, where was it? Dominican what? Republic. In the Dominican Republic. Was? You want to look it up so we yeah, can make I'm sure we have this? Yep, right now. And apparently one of the arguments from them in their defense was, even if he did it, it wouldn't be illegal in that country. He said those words? That, that was like a, some kind of, well. That was the actual I could defense, be, though? There was a defense from a lawyer. It is my understanding. And I could be misremembering this. But that was something that was being passed around, and I could absolutely be wrong. I don't have, I, I, I could be wrong. I don't have that pulled up. I'm only bringing it up because of uh, the associations in the story. But hold on. I'm going to put everything on pause right now. Here's a guy who is, they're saying he's an anti-feminist. 
I don't know if that's fair. He's a men's rights lawyer. You know, he's he's suing for men. And, you know, to get this, it's a difference between targeting feminists and supporting men. I guess the media doesn't make that distinction or whatever. Good point. It's entirely possible this has nothing to do with Epstein. And the only reason this is coming up is because someone noticed she just received this case and are trying to connect it because it's a salacious story. Let's make that clear. It's, it's, it's hard to know what to, what to believe, and people are going to choose what they want to believe. I do not like drawing conclusions or making leaps. What do we know right now? A guy dressed, uh, a, 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 a lawyer supporting men for seemingly no reason, no relation to the story, I don't know or care, disguised himself, went to a judge's house, killed her son, injured her husband. That's about it. Now, the latest update we have, uh, some of the updates, this is from uh, ABC News, breaking suspect and shooting of judge's family found dead of apparently self-inflicted gunshot wound. Multiple law enforcement sources tell ABC News. The deceased suspect was an attorney who had a case before Judge Salas in 2015. So I don't know. What's the likelihood that somebody who had a grudge for five years decided to show up and kill her son? Mm. Four days after she took this case. But that's another issue too, man. I mean, it, it was four days later, but is that enough time to coerce somebody? Like she gets assigned to this and then they call her immediately like, you better do what we want. Otherwise, tomorrow we're calling you. And then the next day they did it. And then the next day. Well, do you think that I'm going to just choose everything wisely here? Um, yeah, we'll be very careful in our choice of words. I mean, so, so you said like, <clears throat> is that enough time for someone to be coerced? What if that wasn't the, the idea? What if they didn't even contact her? If, if this is what is happening, what if that's not what the point is? Yeah, that's what I'm it trying could to, be, to say. It could be anybody who gets involved will suffer. Yeah. And then everyone's going to say, no way. No, I'm not touching that. Oh, you took that case. OK, this is what happens. Not even that. It was assigned to her, right? That's that's. Oh, it was assigned to her. Is that, that how it works? It? I, I don't know. I don't know how it works. I'm not a lawyer or a judge, so I'm, I'm, I'm assuming there's some degree of cho choice. I don't know. Yeah. But I but perhaps, you know, they said, hey, here's the case. And she received it. She says, OK, dude shows up four days later. I have to imagine anybody now who sees this case is going to be like, nope, I'm not touching it. That's why I want to talk about Michael Hastings, too, after mm -hmm. this, yeah. because, you know, I've, I've had a lot of people over the past years tell me that when you enter the political fray and start talking about, you know, politicians, support for opposition to you become a, you become targeted in, in, in varying degrees of severity. So like. If you know what I do, I'm basically like, well, you know, the Democrats kind of suck. That's not that's, that's not the most egregious thing. But the level of influence, the amount of views I get is an issue. So what happens is you get smeared. They try to discredit you when you become an actual political operative and are actually doing bigger, high profile things. The smears are substantially worse. Yeah. When you start doing crazy stuff that actually gets people elected, all of a sudden, then you get criminal probes, you get you know, serious criminal investigations. There's a couple of organizations I'm not going to name that, you know, in recent history. And then you, it come, you come to this criminal enforcement and judging overseeing very serious cases. Now people are going to want to send a message, man. Yep. You know, it's one thing to be like, hey, Democrats are bad. It's another thing to be like, I would like to issue a ruling of discovery in this Jeffrey Epstein banking case so we can see everybody who was involved in these oh, financial yeah. tra transactions and have some high ranking officials from Deutsche Bank sit in that chair and tell me everybody who transferred money and why. Hmm. Then all of a sudden the judge overseeing the case has a dead son. Yep. Then the guy is found in upstate New York apparently I mean, of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. I didn't even hear about that until I came down and you were like, so this is what we're gonna talk about. I'm like, okay. And then you then you dropped that and I was like, <laughs> what? I, you know, you can't write this. No, I'll tell you what, man. More perfect for like a conspiracy. Seriously. Look what the FBI said. The FBI Newark said the FBI has identified Roy Den Hollander as the primary subject in the attack that occurred at the home of the Honorable Esther Sellis. Den Hollander is now deceased. Individuals who believe they have relevant information should contact us. They list their phone number. So the FBI is is openly reaching out and investigating this. Deceased. They didn't say apparent you know suicide or whatever well but the new but abc news is saying that so it could just be i i think the fbi wouldn't get into that much detail so it's probably a suicide yeah uh yeah man so uh what are people gonna think they're gonna think exactly that i there's something that i know i can't say that i want to say right now but i don't 
I, I just don't I don't know. I, I this is a very touchy subject, you know. It's like I have a feeling nobody out there believes that he did that to himself. I guess that's the be- somebody, best way to do it. Somebody tweeted the man who killed the Epstein judge's son didn't kill himself. Someone else said that, right? Someone tweeted that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Just for context. And they were like, is this too soon? I, th- I think it might have been Zero Hedge or something. Is this too soon? So here, here's what I find very, very interesting about this whole thing. When Epstein got arrested, everybody was tweeting. Okay, so we know what happens next, right? Yeah. And we did. And then it did. We did. Yeah. And then it happened and everyone laughed because it was so obvious. Yeah. Well, how about we just check that camera footage to see what happened? Oh, what's that? The camera was broken. So weird. Well, why don't we ask the, the guards? What? Whoa. Oh, they were sleeping. Is that, what, is that what it was? They yeah, I think that's what it was, right? They that were sleeping. That was what it was. Oh, yeah. yeah. They took naps. Yeah, weird, right? They were sleeping. So strange. So uh, when... Whatever, well, Ghislaine, however you pronounce her name, whatever, Maxwell gets arrested. Then, uh. A lot of people are saying my mic is really low. You're. I can't do anything about it. You're. You're, you're okay. normal. All yeah. right. Seems. Yeah. I don't know why. Hmm. Just, just, just pull that sucker a little bit closer to your face right there. Yeah. I can't get any. It's. <laughs> I can't. I nose. can't do it any closer. <laughs> but, uh, I'll try to, to speak a little, uh, louder into the microphone. Oh, that's nice. That's good. Is that better? I, I just made my voice deeper. Oh, that's, I can hear myself a little clearer, actually. Okay. Cool. Hopefully sorry, that worked. Sorry to uh, steer us sideways. No worries. So I don't, I, don't, I don't know what they're doing with uh, Ghislaine or whatever her name is, right? Yeah. Uh, they're saying next year is going to be her, her case. Yeah. A There's year. Another, yeah, a year. How is that legal, though? What do you mean? That's just how, they, how they've done it. No bail? No, they're, no, they're, they're, they're what's tr- her charges? Oh, I don't know. Do you, do you know what the I charges will pull are? I it up. Yeah. Give me one so she's actually being tried by the public corruption unit. Okay. And a lot of people immediately pointed out, that's weird. Yeah. That's not supposed to be the, the division that handles this kind of stuff. Oh, mm. I can't read these on, on live stream. It's just trafficking? Yeah, trafficking, yeah, trafficking, trafficking. basically. Okay. So so most, most of us understand, you know, what yeah. trafficking is yep. of people who are not adults. Let me put it that way. Yeah. I don't think it matters. We're going to get demonetized hard on this one. <laughs> what else? <laughs> but uh, listen, the people that were involved in this are very powerful. Clearly. And they've, they've, they've been getting away with whatever it is for a long time. We don't know who they are. I'm not going to pretend to know who they are. The accusations have been laid out. I believe even Ellen Powell, the you know feminist former CEO of Reddit, said that in 2011, they all knew. They knew what she was doing. They wow. knew what she was involved in. If that's true, what does that mean for all of the people who were involved with Maxwell and Epstein up until Epstein got arrested? They knew. They didn't care. Well, that's what Virginia was Seems saying. Like it. I don't know if you remember Virginia, but they were. she's saying that if, um, if sorry, there's a bug. She's saying that if um, Miss Maxwell gets up in front of everybody, she could name some really, really significant names that would change everything. So I'm really curious what happens now. I think uh, I have some speculation as to what's going to happen. Hmm. What say you, good sir? Oh, man. I think, I think Miss Maxwell's in danger. I think most people agree. And I think when it came to, you know, Epstein, everybody said it, and it was a joke, and then it happened. And, and then no one believes that what, what they're telling us. And then I actually saw an interesting tweet. I don't remember who, who sent it out there. They were saying if, 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 he, if he did do it to himself... I'm going to be careful with my words. If he did do that, and that's what the story is, why would they be treating Ghislaine like she's in danger? Yeah, so right. somebody, so somebody moving her around. Yeah, but but are they? Can you can you look that up? Are they moving her around? They are. Yeah, and uh, really? she said that she's concerned about her own safety. I believe. And didn't she say that she doesn't believe that Epstein? Oh no, she doesn't <laughs> believe that he um, uh, passed away of natural causes. Oh man, I'm just waiting for someone to kick the door in, and then you know Tim Kess RL's over. That'll be a good show. <laughs> Makes everybody a little paranoid, man. It but I'll, certainly I'll tell you does. What, I'll tell you what. When it certainly when, does. You know, just because they're par- just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not after you. I think they're desperate. Whoever they is, I don't know. I don't know, but clearly there is a criminal conspiracy. That's why the investigation into Deutsche Bank. That's why the criminal charges. Of course, there are co-conspirators. I'm not playing into any of these conspiracy tropes. I don't care about any speculation as to who people might think these people are. Yeah. 
we have arrested, the United States has arrested Maxwell. She's been charged with certain things. If that's the case, there are likely other people that she's done business with that don't want their name attached to it. And so this is what I'm saying, man. A lot of people are like, it would be too risky to, to pull these things off with a judge. Like, no, it must have been some disgruntled, you know, attorney who she ruled against because it would be too risky. It's not too risky. Not at all. Because now, now that she's been targeted, and, and likely it's a chilling effect that a lot of people are going to avoid this case. Mm-hmm. We're not going to hear the names of the people involved because who's going to want to go? I mean, will they actually, in good faith, to the extent that they can actually go after this properly? Or are they going to be like, um, everything looks in order here. Uh, case dismissed. Have a nice day. I don't want to be involved. If it comes to Maxwell and her testimony, yeah. she needs, say, one name and people and whoever that whoever's name that is it's going to be a domino effect it's a good point because then they go and arrest that person they bring in people you know what i mean yeah so think about it you're this ultra rich you know multi-millionaire dude and you know that maxwell can say your name it may cause riots it may destabilize everything but why would you let her testify you're right they're moving her around and that's i mean it's everybody's thinking it. Everyone's thinking it. You guys are all out there. I see, I'm reading the chat. Yeah, I see what you guys are saying. It, dude. She's thinking we, it. We all are thinking. We were, you just said it. Everyone was thinking it before he, you know, whatever you know, happened you know, in his cell happened. You, you, know know? The wor- you know what the worst part of this is? What? It kind of makes me feel like we're in uh, some kind of like movie, but we're all ancillary characters. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, you'd know what's going on. We're all, we're all, we're all side characters. We, uh, unfortunately, not involved in the main plot. Yeah, you know, we're just we're just like in. I mentioned this before, like we're in Fallout Three, and we're just the Wasteland Radio, yeah. like playing in the background. Wasn't someone that, someone's off doing the adventure, tracking the stuff. The actual investigators, but wasn't there um, something to do with the the head lawyer or judge in New York State that was replaced? The Southern District of New York's um, what was his name Bremer. I do not know. It was Sorry, right before sure. she yeah. got arrested. She right was before, replaced like, out, and he, then he, she, his guy was fired. Right. Oh yeah. Bill Barr tried removing him mm-hmm. and said he was resigning. And the guy said, no, I'm not. And then Barr said, you're out. Get out. Yeah. Whoa. OK. And then the left said that this was Bill Barr trying to cover things up because this dude who got removed was on the level and going after Trump. When the right says that this guy was shielding them and Epstein died while he was the prosecutor. Right. I'm sorry, man. I'm going to have to side with that on, on the right with this one in the sense that Whoever the first was it, thing he did was arrest Ghislaine. No, no, no. Whoever's involved in Epstein, mm-hmm. you got to get rid of him. Right. So, because it, it, at the very, you know, uh, le- worst case scenario is this guy died on the watch of all of these people. Good point. No, sorry. You know, they, you got you to gotta get some new people in there, even if it's an issue of incompetence. Yep. Exactly. And this guy was like, no. He, he, wasn't, he was like, I'm not getting out. So they got rid of him. Yep. Now Maxwell's being rotated. So the question is, if... Epstein, you know, ended himself, then why would they be moving Maxwell around and keeping her under super high security? Right. Well, it literally says in this article I found that they're worried about assassination attempts on her. <laughs> that's, what, that's what they say. I mean, I'm reading them the New York Post, so I'm going to go with that. So so let me, let me ask you then. The New York Post said they're worried about assassination attempts? Yep. They're worried about assassination attempts, and an assassin just showed up and killed the son of a judge. That was overseeing a lawsuit for Epstein's finances. Right. Mm-hmm. Look, man, let me let me let me level with all you guys. Uh, not only that, hold on. Not only that, it was they they continued working with him after he got in trouble, and that's that's what they're they're being investigated by because they continued to work with him even though they he was being prosecuted for what he was doing. Interesting. In two thousand and eight, I believe. Yeah, when, yeah. When it it was when he found out, or th- when he was found out, right? And then they continue just working with them and then that was that's why they they're being investigated now i just want to make sure everyone understands there we we are we are on the razor's edge with this live show right now that is correct and you say one wrong word and they're just sitting there waiting their fingers shaking like say it Uh, i'm gonna ban you and oh you didn't say it just say the one wrong word and we're gonna smash that ban button no no yeah so we gotta we gotta be really really careful about yeah you know But I'll I'll be honest with you guys. I'm not a big fan of conspiracy theories in any capacity because people like to make assumptions. 
And then when you do, it actually makes it harder to figure out. And you also have to be, be, be careful because when there are actual conspiracies, they're going to throw you red herrings on purpose so that you say something dumb. And then as soon as you do, you're off the trail. Well, gotcha. And you, exactly, you're veering towards something that they wanted you to go towards. And right. That's where you're digging into when they're over there. When WikiLeaks released a bunch of emails, mm -hmm. we saw really strange conversations from high profile figures. All of a sudden, these fake posts popped up lying, just literally making up slang terms. They were like, this word means this and this word means that. Literally made it up. Wow. Everyone just bought it. And it became the narrative to where they're like, look for this word and that word. And it's just nonsense. Yeah. They threw everyone off the actual trail and it was brilliantly done. I remember because I remember when these like conspiracies were emerging and I was following the emails because it was a Wiki, WikiLeaks release. Mm -hmm. I was looking at what was being said. I'm like, this is very interesting stuff. Here's some leads. And then all of a sudden, for some reason, a bunch of fake posts popped up and started getting spread. And now everyone believes it's still to this day. People believe fake things. Yep. I see it all the time. Completely I fake. I see it all the time. But the, so, some of it is real. The problem is it took only one person, probably some, it, it could be, it could look, it could range from some dumb person in their basement laughing, being like, I'm going to make this up and press enter to an intelligence, you know, agency or a state, you know, funded agency being like, let's throw them off our trail. And that's why conspiracy theories are a problem. If you don't have evidence, stop. Yep. So now we have stupid conspiracy theories which make it impossible to actually track down who did what because the whole thing's discredited. Now you can't even talk about it. That's all, it's, 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 it's so annoying. You know what, man? I mentioned earlier that the, the, one of the reasons why there's no real journalists is because of the, the, the you know, threat to people's safety and stuff like that. Yep. But the other reason is just people, well, for one, money. Easier to make money doing other things. But when, when someone throws false evidence and an internet community just gobbles it up like red meat. Yeah. It creates this this bubble, this echo chamber that's not journalism. It's true. And so opportunists will chase after it to make money. They'll jump in the pit with everybody else. And then once everyone's in the pit, YouTube goes snip, chops it off and throws everyone in the ban list. You can actually do real journalism tracking this stuff. So I'll, I'll just say, man, you know, there are a lot of emails that got leaked, a lot of really weird stuff that may suggest weird things. Yeah. And then fake news jumped in and now the whole thing is a muddy mess of fake news that can't you can't actually break through well i know that there's um there's all these statistics going around about how many traffickers are being arrested under trump the trump administration yeah comparing it to the obama numbers is that is that true though i mean i've seen screenshots of it yeah th well that's kind of what i was uh, i was going to talk about and I, I i have something pulled up here and it's just he this is this is a quote from him. He's saying, my, my administration is putting unprecedented pressure on traffickers, home and abroad. Uh, he said during uh, an event, he said, we have signed more legislation on human trafficking than any other administration has ever th even thought about it. Of course, it's a little, but he, he authorized over $400 million in, in fighting the issue. So he, he's pushing, he's pushing for it. You know, and a lot of people, uh, I, I ask, you know, I asked a tweet um, a couple weeks ago, like, what, what is it about Trump that you really like? And a lot of people said that that is the number one thing that he's fighting trafficking. There's this uh, young woman who's going viral mm -hmm. because apparently she got red pilled on Trump oh, yeah. traffickers. Right, Jude. I don't know. I'm, I don't care to you know. I'm, I'm not saying this. That's to all I know. I'm just pointing out that a lot of people quickly jumped on it. Yep. She put a TikTok and she was saying like, once you realize Trump is actually going after the traffickers, like you kind of wake up to it. Yeah. I do think a lot of people are wrapped up in too much conspiracy theory. I can agree with that. We know, f we, so I, I think it's fair to say for an average person tracking what the Justice Department has done with Epstein, his history, the witnesses who have come out, this dude was trafficking and so is, yeah. you know, Ghislaine or whatever, Maxwell. And they're being arrested and charged for these things because there's probable cause, there's, grand, there's evidence, mm -hmm. they're going after him. From there, we can speculate as to all the people who flew on his plane, who've been on his island, and I believe that does include Donald Trump. There's a lot of photos of him with Epstein and, you know, a lot of other people, which leads the left to argue Trump is trying to cover up and the right saying he's trying to go after the guy. I think there was some lawyer who said that Donald Trump was the only person who actually said my resources are at your disposal. Did you see that? 
Yeah, to, to take him out. Right, exactly. To, to, to go. He told the lawyer who was right. defending one of the victims. Yeah, that Trump exactly. was like, let me know what you need. Exactly, yeah. So in my personal opinion, having seen a lot of these stories, you know, what's going on, mm-hmm. I personally think that Trump is more likely to be going after these people and trying to get them. I absolutely think that. Yeah. Definitely. From from I mean, I, I've done extensive research on Donald Trump of, over the past month and all all of the things that I've seen has has shown me that he is absolutely against this and wants wants to bring them down. So, we'll see, you know, if something happens, you know, uh, there there someone tweeted this when Epstein got arrested, they said if Epstein gets arrested, we riot, right? <gasps> I mean, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. If, if he kills himself, we riot. Not if he gets arrested. And then with Maxwell, they said the same thing. And I'm just like, yeah, no one's yeah, going to do anything. Yeah, you didn't riot before. They're not going to riot now. Isn't it crazy what people riot for? Like, you have you have Epstein and Maxwell. You know what they're doing. It's like, what's going on, man? Well, it would be interesting to, to see what would happen if mainstream media pushed the narrative like they do other things. I don't want to specifically call anything out, but... They make a they they do, you know, play with people's emotions. And if they were to, didn't a bunch of do pe- it this way, I, you know, w- would it would they riot? Would they? I don't know. Didn't a bunch of people in media fly with Epstein and go to his Diddler Pro- Island? Probably why they're not talking about it. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. Man, we live in a creepy country with mm. a bunch of creepy people doing creepy stuff, man. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. We do the show live. Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. If you want to catch the full show, tune into this channel, subscribe, hit the like button, or check us out on iTunes and Spotify, and we will soon have this podcast up for free on all podcast platforms. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all in the next episode.